Okay, when I, when, I, when I look at the schedule today, I think who, who's, the, I can kind of divide the companies up into two parts. One is the, the steady eddy growers of production cash flow, and then there are really a couple big catalyst stories, and today those would be Renaissance, um, Valura with the Yamak 1 test, and uh, Yangera. So, and Jim's on this afternoon. Uh, our next speaker is, is more the Steady Eddy, and, and I've called this company the absolute single best defensive oil stock uh, in the portfolio. Uh, we're, we're talking about um, freehold royalties. They've got a great business model. They've got a, a, a low valuation, and this is the type of company that just continues to build steady wealth without me having to look at the screen. So I love that idea. The less time I've got to spend looking at the screen, the better, so I can kind of re research other ideas. So uh, we're grateful today to have Tom Mullane with us, uh, CEO. Tom, please come on up and give us the full update on, on the story. Thank you very much, Keith, uh, for inviting us here to talk about the uh, freehold story. It's been around for 21 years. It's not something uh, that uh, uh, has been around. It's been around a long time, so it's not a fresh story. However, it has got a lot of uh, visibility since Prairie Sky came to the market about four years ago. Um, but we continue uh, to be a, a good generator of cash and we're a safe way to play the oil and gas space. And we'll go over some of our metrics on how we, we, we frame our story and how we can have de delivered value uh, for many years and how we'll continue to do so. So when, uh, when we look at some of our, um, I call this tourist information, uh, we're about 12,000 barrels a day. 99% uh, of our operating income comes from royalties. We have become a pure play royalty company over the last five years. Five years ago, 30% uh, of our production came from, uh, came from working interest production, and we drilled our own well. Um, we had a capital budget of $40 million. That's all gone away. Um, we are a royalty company. Our uh, capital budget, which is, you know, very, uh, is extremely small. And so uh, we are a pure play royalty company. We have our, a dividend of uh, 63 cents a, a share uh, per year. Uh, we've increased our dividends the last a couple of years. Um, as we, you know, as the oil patch has, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, I guess recuperated from the, the big fall in oil prices in uh, 2014 and 15. Um, most of our revenue comes from oil and natural gas liquids, 88%. And uh, so we are, we, we, we are very tied to oil uh, prices and to WTI price. Uh, our current dividend yield is 5%, and it's a very safe dividend as we pay it only 60% uh, of our adjusted payout. Um, our market cap's $1.5 billion, and our net debt to fund some operation is 0.7, and that would be about 0.3 at the end of the year if we don't do any acquisitions over and above our free cash flow. Oh, if we don't do any more acquisitions. We, we, we have done a lot of acquisitions in the last number of years. We'll get into that. So there's three ways to create, uh, uh, we deliver value to our um, shareholders. We create value by buying acquisitions, uh, and we've been doing that over the last uh, number of years. We also lease out our lands. One of the things that was a little confusing to part, uh, producers when we were drilling on our own lands and uh, leasing out is there the question on the producers was, uh, are you saving the best lands for yourself? And uh, we couldn't really actually say that we weren't. Um, so we don't drill on our own lands anymore and we don't have a, you know, a capital program to drill. Uh, we haven't done that for uh, two or three years now. Uh, and so it's very clear uh, to producers that we're open for business and um, we've, we'll, we'll get into the number of new leases that we've had uh, created with producers, but we've increased that threefold uh, over 2016 and on a, in a great, um, um, we've created a lot of value uh, through new leases and we're on our way in 2018 to have another great year of uh, new leases with producers. 
Uh, we enhance value through our audit program. We just make sure uh, we get paid what we should get paid. Um, that has generated $69 million of value to our shareholders over our 21 years. So that audit program is good. Uh, it, when we buy a lot of assets uh, through our, the history, some of these contracts are a little complicated and some guys aren't paying us the full share and our auditors just make sure we just get our fair price and our fair uh, take. And we enhance value by just keeping our debt really low. Uh, we'll show that a, as well. So we have a low payout and low debt, so we position ourselves as a safe way to play oil and gas. And we deliver value through our uh, dividends um, and, and improving the quality of our assets, which we've done over many years here. When you look at our investment performance over the last 21 years, um, it has been uh, quite impressive. Obviously, it's been challenged, uh, just like uh, the rest of the oil patch in the last four years. However, uh, things are turning around, being weighted to oil. Uh, things are starting to pick up, and uh, we're doing quite well, and our, our metrics uh, show that. If you had invested $10 in our share uh, in our shares at the IPO, you'd be, and you reinvested those dividends, you'd be worth $122 million today. Uh, so as an average 12% uh, return uh, to shareholders over our history. When we look at what we've done over the last four years, uh, one of the things we've, we've done is we've increased our royalty production by about 63, 65%. Uh, we've uh, doubled our land acreage, and that's where the future comes from is uh, when you look at, we've gone from 3 million acres of land to 6 million. Uh, so that's where the future is. And also we've, uh, we've doubled our tax pools. We don't see ourselves taxable for about three to four years, depending on oil price, uh, which, is one, which was, um, when I started uh, six years ago, was our number one cash expense, was the tax we paid. We don't see that. And our tax pools have increased and our debt has gone down. Um, and you know, we are one times or less than one times. Our, um, our target is, between, is to be between 0.5 and 1.5, but our happy space is around one or less. We pay about 3.3% uh, uh, on that debt, so it's actually a, you know, it's quite um, accretive to have some debt, but we want to position ourselves as a safe um, investment, so we keep our debt down in case interest rates rise. And acquisitions, we've participated uh, in buying acquisitions through the downturn. What we've, what we've seen with, with royalties is that when prices are high, we see more drilling on our lands, and when prices are low, uh, producers are looking to divest of non-core assets, which could be royalties. And so we're able to pick up good quality assets in the downturn, in which we did. When you look at our uh, monthly free cash flow, um, our dividend yield is 5%, but our free cash flow um, increases with, with oil price. Um, and so today, you know, I think the average uh, WTI on the strip for the balance of the year is about $66 uh, dollars, uh, a barrel next year, $63. And so when you look at our uh, free cash flow, our dividend at uh, five cents and a quarter per month is really well protected down to like, the 40s, uh, so you can uh, be rest assured that our, our dividend is safe where it is and we need a huge correction in oil. Uh, I'm not going to say it's never going to happen again because it happened in 16 and it was pretty painful, uh, but um, uh, we are protected on the downside just because of our, our ability to pay our dividend at very low oil prices. Even at the depths of despair when oil was about $28, we still had a four cents per share dividend which was fundable and uh, well protected at that point. When we look at uh, our operating margins, they're very high. As a royalty uh, company, uh, we do not pay operating costs. We do not participate in the drilling of wells in our, our lands. Um, we don't pay royalties, and so our margins are very high. We had a cash cost a couple years ago when we did have still had some working interest assets. Our total cash costs were in that seven to eight dollars a barrel range. Uh, there are projected to be five dollars a barrel range. And as we are more levered to oil, um, our our netbacks are in that thirty-five plus range a barrel, which are 
very good compared to EMT companies. Our dividend is sustainable, as I mentioned, and here's just uh, where we were going in 16. Our payout ratio is quite high. We did drop our dividend, but we've increased our dividend the last two years, and then, uh, we increased it 25% in 2017, and this year we increased it by 5%. Uh, and we looked, uh, we are right on the lower end of our adjusted payout target. Um, we are going to continue to watch where WTI goes uh, in the next few. Uh, quarters and then we talk about to our board um, about our dividend and have a potential increase if uh, prices stay in this uh, mid 60 range but that's something we discuss with the board quarterly but we have increased our dividend over the last two years on a uh, in the beginning of the year and our net debt to fund some operations is low and we'll be at 0.3 times if we don't do any acquisitions uh, however, there is a strong um, acquisition market. We've done about $34 million of acquisitions this year. We did about 86, 83 to 86 last year. Um, and so we continue to participate in adding quality royalty assets uh, to our portfolio. And a lot of this is done uh, with free cash flow. Um, we did $86 million worth of deals last year, but we didn't have a raise or anything like that. So we haven't had a raise since early 2016, and we continue to add assets within our own um, funds. When you look at uh, the drilling on our lands, 60% um, of the drilling is either in southeast Saskatchewan or in Saskatchewan or in uh, the Viking play. Um, our top five uh, plays are in Saskatchewan, uh, which is a very, very friendly uh, environment uh, to uh, drill and have very good netbacks because they're all light oil generally. Um, um, drilling in that in those areas so that continues to see funding uh, and at we have and with these increasing oil prices and if they remain we believe we might have a record year of drilling on our lands this year and here is the drilling trends uh, on a gross basis our the drilling um, was up in the first quarter on a net basis it was down a little bit we think there was a little bit of a pause in, in uh, some uh, on our mineral title lands, but we think that'll pick up. We, with our leasing uh, activity increasing dramatically, that um, is usually leads to drilling on our lands because they don't lease. These are short-term leases, two to three years. They're not going to take a lease out if they're not going to drill it. Uh, typically, typically, it's drilled. But we're we are forecasting a 25 net wells. That's the gross number of wells multiplied by the uh, average royalty rate. Uh, one of the things that uh, we will find on our, as a, a business, um, we have 300 payers. Um, that they're all quality uh, names uh, that pay us. Um, we've had very few defaults, uh, very minimal as far as our, um, even in 2016, 17, when things were really going bad, um, we had very few defaults. So uh, um, uh, we are well protected as well as the way we structure our royalties. We have the ability to take in kind. And so it means that um, we, we're, we're safe and we, we spend a lot of time to make sure that we can, if a producer is in trouble, uh, very few of those now are in trouble now that the oil prices are, are come up and a lot of balance sheets are fixed, um, but, but we do protect ourselves and we do take about 15% of our um, production in kind and market it ourselves. We don't believe we have to take that much, but we're just overly conservative in, in that. Um, the new leases with producers, uh, you look back in 2016, we did 30 leases with producers and we tripled, tripled that last year and we're well on our way to increasing uh, the number of new leases um, where we have uh, close to 50 uh, today. Um, you know, so we're halfway where there uh, on last year's performance. We created a new leasing team at the beginning of 17 and they're doing a fantastic job of getting our lands out to producers and getting them uh, marketed and getting them drilled. So what is our near-term focus? Well, we always want to enhance our royalties by buying acquisitions that are better quality than the assets that we have right now. We did a few acquisitions um, it this year where we added uh, some royalties on the Weyburn field. I think most people are familiar with that. The field, is, I think, was discovered in the late 50s, unitized in the early 60s on water flood and then on CO2 flood. It has a 
a 75 year uh, life ahead of it. We, we bought a royalty on uh, Mitsu Guild Unit Number One, which is a very flat, uh, relatively low decline asset as well in the first quarter. We also uh, bought a little bit of um, uh, an interest in some Duvernay lands, uh, a 1% royalty uh, on um, <coughs> on some in the Huxley area. And so we are adding to our positions and adding quality assets that are, are gaining um, uh, you know, attractive uh, economics. Some of the uh, producers in that area where we, th we just gained that um, uh, the royalty in the Duvernay, uh, they just did re recent funding uh, was uh, completed uh, this week actually. So we're gonna see more wells drilled there. We wanna grow our dividend, uh, but safely. Um, and we revisit that every quarter with our board. Uh, we want we want to remain a low risk, so we're going to keep our debt down, and we're going to keep our payout uh, down as well. And we're just going to um, continue to organically grow through these lease outs and getting our lands out to producers. In April, we came out with our asset book, and that was detailing the depth of, in of inventory we have in our lands. Um, we hadn't uh, outlined that to investors. Uh, we had a 10-year inventory that we put together over a, you know, a month or so in 2016. But we took over a year, reviewed our lands. We have over the, reviewed our six million acres of lands. Uh, what we did was identified over uh, about $7 billion of undiscounted value on our lands and 21,000 wells that could be drilled on our lands. We think that this was a piece that was missing in our story, is that we have a 40-year drilling inventory uh, on our lands, and so we're gonna be in the royalty business in oil and gas for a very long time, and it's a very safe investment. When we look, we cut up the Western Canada into five areas. 80% um, of our, the value of the future locations are in Saskatchewan and in central Alberta. And most of this, over most of this, are oil targets. We have an oil-weighted asset base. Uh, we have a diversified portfolio. We have 21,000 locations on our lands, 40 years of future development at current drilling pace, and uh, there's a seven billion undiscounted total value. We have the asset book is on our website, as well as the presentation that we uh, gave at the in in April. Um, uh, you know, over a month and a half ago in, in Toronto. That's on our website as well. So take a look. Um, I think there's a lot of value, valuable information there. So why would you own freehold? Uh, we're positioning ourselves as a safe way to play the oil and the gas space. We've outperformed the TSX index and the oil and gas index over our history. And I think it's because uh, as a royalty company, you're top line, so you don't have those uh, inflationary pressures on drilling and offer costs that you have when you're a producer, you just uh, to take the top line. And that has um, uh, served us well over the 21 years. We're sustainable with a very low payout, um, low debt, low cash costs. Um, we also have a strong balance sheet and we have you know, quality assets with greater than 40 years of drilling inventory in front of us. So, um, this is a, a company that has been around for 21 years. We've been delivering value to our shareholders over that time period, and I think we can continue to do that for another 20 plus years at least. So if there's any questions. Yes. Okay, the question was, what's the deal pipeline look like? As oil prices increase, I'm always worried that the producers don't need any money anymore, that this live within cash flow or the equity raise. One of the things that we're finding is that it's only a very select few uh, that can raise money, raise equity right now. And so uh, producers are still looking uh, to you know, increase their drilling programs and they're still looking in their, you know, their cupboards for royalties or creating royalties uh, to fund that development. So we haven't seen the pipeline actually decrease. Um, uh, Paramount has a package that bids were due today on. Um, there is a number of, we, we're, we work on about three or four, three to five different uh, royalty packages at any one time. 
we always worry that that's going to fall off. We haven't seen that fall off in the four years I've been, or the last four years or the last six years where I've been involved in the company. The first couple years were kind of slow, uh, but in the last, uh, since the oil downturn, it, it hasn't turned off. And until there's a increase in access to equity, we still think there's going to be a good pipeline flow. Uh, the question was, what, am I, what are we paying for royalty units on a multiple? And the royalty cash units, cash uh, when we buy assets? So, what's, what's the okay. the so I'll just describe how we go about um, assessing value on royalties. And so that'll make a difference. It's like working interest assets. Some are worth uh, one times cash flow and some are worth a 10 times cash flow. Royalty assets are very similar. Some are worth... Um, you know, three times cash flow, some are worth 25 times cash flow. So the process in, in evaluating um, uh, a royalty asset is that we take the existing production, royalty production, blow it down, um, it put a decline curve, a ca discount of cash flow model to get all together on that. We add a drilling wedge on upside. If there's a lot of upside uh, on a lands, then the multiple will have to be very high. Um, but our geologist put, looks at historical drilling and what we see as future drilling based on current commodity prices. And then we add some land value to that. We put in a cash flow deck and we pay, depending on the quality of the asset, either high single digits or low double digits, or we don't bid at all if it doesn't improve the quality of our assets. So on a multiple basis, it could be, you know, as low, um, it's, we actually don't bid on much at a very low multiple. Because it's a low multiple, usually it's not a quality asset. And so we don't, we don't bid on those. But on quality assets, oil sands assets could be 20 times. Um, <coughs> on, on a deep inventory gas, ass, gas asset, it could be in those kind of multiples just because gas prices are so low right now. Um, we haven't been able to do a lot of gas deals just because um, the bid ask spread is very large. But it varies, but it's most of on a rate of return uh, driven, not a cash flow multiple driven kind of um, evaluation. Yes. Uh, think of us as the Crown Corporation or think of us as a farmer who owns freehold title. Um, we, we have no obligations for uh, abandoning wells as a royalty owner. I never get that question. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. The question is how do we differ, differentiate ourselves from Prairie Sky? I think um, Prairie Sky is a different land base than we do. Um, theirs is more concentrated in central Alberta and along um, from the historical um, lands that they have. Uh, they are about, uh, they have about 15 million acres of land. We have 6 million, but on a per share basis, uh, we're very similar, about that 50 to 55,000 um, acres per million shares or something like that. And <coughs> so our land base on a per share basis is very uh, similar. Our, our cash flow per share uh, is, we actually had a better quarter last quarter than they did. Um, so uh, the opportunities on our lands are, we on a per acre basis actually higher uh, just because we are in areas where it has um, specifically southeast Saskatchewan, we have a bigger presence there where it's uh, medium or light oil. Um, there's multiple zones, multiple targets there that differentiates ourselves. We have a very strong position in the Viking and the Dodds land area. Um, it's in Saskatchewan. I think the, the best quality historical Viking is there. Uh, so we have very good positions there. They have, very, they have a very enviable Duvernay position. Uh, they have a thousand uh, sections. Um, and we're building our position in the Duvernay. Um, they have some very good lands, but I think in general, um, we love our, our lands. We think there's lots of opportunity as we outlined in our asset book. And uh, on a uh, you know, value play, this is a much better uh, buy.
Well, that's a very good uh, question, Keith. Um, what we want to do is continue to do our business. And what we'd like to do is have more organic growth in our land and show growth on a per share basis. And I think it's very challenging uh, for both Prairie Sky and ourselves to do that over the last uh, four years on a per share basis just because of the industry where it was and the amount of drilling that was being uh, done on our lands. What we have to do is just continue to show on a growth, a cash flow per share, production per share growth. And that's, we can do that organically without any costs, without raising any shares, et cetera, by organic drilling on our land. And that's by leasing our land and getting producers to drill on our land. We are showing um, an uptick in our leasing and that will, eventually that'll turn into drilling and higher drilling rates. We hope we have a record year of drilling on our lands, but uh, we think we just need to perform quarter over quarter. I think that's what the shareholders want us to do. So our objective is to get assets which have a deep inventory of drilling on the lands. Um, there are plays uh, in the Western Canada that will continue to grow. We believe the Montney will continue to grow and oil sands will continue to grow. Conventional assets, it's very selective where it's gonna have uh, growth. Uh, we'd like to do a Montney deal um, or a deep basin deal. Um, that has a, a strong inventory and so that, you know, you don't pay too much for it today, um, but a reasonable fair value, uh, but something that can continue to grow into the future. Uh, so we would look at deep inventory kind of gas plays that have some liquids so that they're survivable um, and also look at some resource plays like oil sands as well. Well, thank you very much, everybody.